And so we decided, you know what, we're going to hike up it. How long could it possibly take? It's not that bad. Turns out it's very steep and very long up these porticos, and it took us a long time to find. (laughs) Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Kat. I'm Chris. And this is episode number 174. Welcome back. Thank you. And I can't believe we're at 174. I wonder what we're going to do when we get to episode 200. Retire. No. (laughs) No, but thank you. I have been in Myrtle Beach for the past week uh, on a family vacation, which sadly Chris wasn't able to join for. Uh, We had already kind of planned out our time off, Chris's time off for the year. And then my parents were like, let's do a family trip. And I was like, crap, we've already paid for all of this. Um, But I sent Christopher plenty of videos and photos of all the chaos that ensued from the week. uh, Because there were seven adults and four children, all boys, and the oldest one is five, the youngest is a year old. And it is absolutely, it was chaos. We had different weeks. Oh my gosh. We'll put it that way. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, I was... I had so much fun. It was really great to really bond and hang out with my nephews for an entire week. Um, But at the same time, it was so nice to get back. Uh, I got back at like nine o'clock Saturday morning. Luckily, my flights did not get delayed or canceled at all during this trip. I don't know how that happened. You got out right before like a tropical tropical storm storm. warning too. And it was storming the night before. And I was like, oh my gosh, my flight's going to get delayed or canceled. Like I checked my flight. Like I woke up at three o'clock because my flight was at 540 in the morning. And, you know, I'm starting to get ready and pack up everything. And luckily my flight was still on its way. And I was like, perfect. Okay. I'm happy to get home. Um But yeah, so getting home, I like showered and unpacked and, you know, got into bed. Professor came to cuddle and I just passed out for a good chunk of the morning (laughs) and it was great. Um, So yeah, I feel like I'm home this for the next couple of weeks and then I am back on the road uh, with my sister to the south of France for France Voyager content, which I'll definitely be talking about here on the podcast, um, definitely need to talk about Myrtle Beach because I've been to Myrtle Beach many, many times, especially as a child, and then getting to go back this past uh, week. Uh, I've got some good content for that. And then, yeah, and then we've made our final payment for Uganda and Kenya. So we'll be heading that way soon. I know you're really excited about that. I am. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Like dangerously so. Yeah. And and we even paid for like we had planned and put a deposit down this time last year, like last summer. Yeah. For that. So when mom and dad again, we'd already started planning Italy. So when my parents were like, oh, let's do a family trip. I was like, oh, we just put a non-refundable deposit down on this big trip. And I was like, I don't think Chris is going to be able to make it. Um, <laughs> but um, it was still a lot of fun, and we definitely had you FaceTime the kids a lot. But yeah, I don't know. So that's kind of what's all that's all happened. We saw your family yesterday, and that was also really great. But what was your highlight? I think my highlight was picking you up from the airport on Saturday, and then going for a run on some new trails, which were really nice. It was beautiful weather for it, and then going to a few breweries. And cooking dinner together, like it just felt, it felt good to have you home. Oh yeah, that was it. Was really great to have you pick me up at the airport and and then getting to spend the day together. Um, and then also, I I really enjoyed my first day at the beach with everybody. That Sunday, I flew in late Saturday night, and then on Sunday we had a big beach day. Um, got to introduce some of the nephews who've never been to the beach before, uh, cause they're so little and that was really fun to get to go and have them experience it for the first time. Except one of my nephews who is about 18 months old was passed out the entire time we were at the beach. <laughs> it was his nap time and he just fell out and was there the entire time we were there. Um, but the rest of them were so excited. They had so much fun and just jumping in the waves and frolicking and all that stuff. Um, so I'd say that was a big highlight too. But yeah, other than that, I mean, your week was your week was much different than mine. It was very tame. I think you were you read. Uh, you did not wake up at five thirty in the morning to the screams of children raring to go for the day. <laughs> yeah, which is I mean is always a positive. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a very chill week. Like I was on my own schedule, 
which was which was nice. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. It was it was a week where I could just kind of like do what I want, which was yeah. cool. Order the food you want. Yeah, <laughs> like do like if I want to just like read all night, I can just read all night, and yeah, it was good. It was good. Nice. Um, it's really funny because planning my trip to Provence next uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, there's a day that we have to get up like at four thirty in the morning because. I don't know. I had us picking up the car in Avignon pretty early. So we have to get there at a good time to pick up the car. And so I was like, okay, well, our train is super early in the morning. We may have to get up at 430. And my sister was like, oh, don't worry. I'm used to it because, you know, she has two kids and they get up really early. So, um, but yeah, so very excited. Looking forward to those, those coming trips in the coming months. But in the meantime, We have done this whole bucket list series, and we have also just come back a month ago, today, a month ago today, from Italy, where we spent seven incredible days um, eating and drinking and seeing some sights. Um, And it's a pretty unique itinerary for Italy. And a lot of you guys have expressed some interest in in seeing what that itinerary is like and how to do that. So today we're actually going to be talking about how to spend our seven days in Italy Um, how to spend this unique itinerary where we go to a place specifically for wine, a place specifically for food, and then, of course, ending in Rome. uh, Because if you're going, especially it was Christopher's first time, you kind of have to see some of the big sights of Rome um, if you've never been. But, yeah, do you have anything else to to add? Um, No, not really. I mean, other than the fact that this is going to be kind of like the overarching one, and then we'll go into more details probably in future episodes on the specific places. But this is really an itinerary, or an Italy itinerary, like you said, for food and drink lovers. Right. Yes. There's not going to be Venice. There's not going to be the Amalfi. Cinque Terre is not on there. Florence isn't on there. Not saying that those places aren't for mm-hmm. food and drink lovers, but... It's um, it's a little more off the beaten path. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Or maybe like an uncommon itinerary. Yeah. I mean, Rome is obviously on the beaten path. Milan is very popular. But the other places we went to in the middle of the trip where we spent the bulk of our time are actually pretty off the beaten path. Um, not as well known and definitely not as traveled to as, as or as famous as some of these other places, but very much well known for food and wine and some yes. really good food and wine. Um So that's why we chose them for this trip. So again, we only had seven days. If you've got two weeks, heck, you can throw in Amalfi Coast, Cinque Terre, Venice, you know, all of the Florence, all the famous places too. um, If you're adding that into your unique itinerary or your your two week itinerary or 10 day itinerary or something like that, and you want to throw on something else, feel free to do that. I have been to Capri and Naples and stuff like that. Also very much worth visiting. It's just that's not what we were going for in this trip because we had such a short amount of time and we have very specific things that we wanted to do. But if you're looking for kind of an off the beaten path or a unique itinerary of Italy, or you just want to see what a 70 itinerary um, of Italy looks like that you can potentially add to your bigger itinerary, we've got you covered on this one. Um, but starting out, I think you guys, if you've listened to other episodes, you realize that travel is crazy right now. Um, our flights actually got canceled going to Italy. Um, and I don't know if we've talked about the chaos of that. I think we have. But where about five hours before we were supposed to get on our plane, we were going to do Cleveland to JFK, JFK to Milan. Um, our flights got canceled and they got moved to the next day. And unfortunately, when you only have a seven day trip to Italy, um, you it's hard to miss a day of that um, and get pushed, pushed back an extra day. So we ended up last minute booking a flight on United and flew, I think, Cleveland to Chicago, Chicago to Milan and got in on time. But oh my goodness, the drama and (laughs) the nerves trying to get that all booked. But we made it to Milan on that Saturday on our day one of our itinerary. And Milan is, there's a lot to see and do in Milan. I have spent multiple days in Milan before. But if you're doing an itinerary like this, I actually suggest one day in Milan is probably a good amount of time. Um, It is kind of a fashion and business part of Italy, of District of Italy, Um, but some sites to go see while you're there. Definitely the Santa Maria del Grazie. Um, That is the church that's right next to the Last Supper Museum. So if you want to actually go see the Last Supper painting, that is actually going to be there at Santa Maria del Grazie. Um, 
in the museum, obviously next door is where it's at, but you can also go in the church too. And it's very beautiful. It's a beautiful square. Just make sure to book everything well in advance because uh, we got there hoping to just get tickets same day. That is not how that worked. And we were unable to get it, unfortunately. Um, But the square was very beautiful. And uh, now we know for next time and now what to recommend to you guys. So if that is something you want to see, um, I had no idea that that was a thing in Milan that you could go see until Christopher pointed that out. So yeah, um, if you want to go see the Last Supper painting, definitely go and book that. Um, Then, of course, the other big thing to do is the Duomo. The Duomo of Milan is gigantic. It is certainly a bucket list thing to go and see while you're in Milan. It's massive, and I highly, highly recommend booking a ticket that includes, um, and in advance, because again, things get sold out, um, to go up in the elevator or up the stairs to the roof and getting to walk along the roof. You get some fantastic views of the city, especially when the church bells are going. It's really cool. Um, And it's just a really neat way to get up close and personal with the architecture of the building. Um, I also recommend going into the um, archaeological site underneath of the church and also just inside of the church itself. It's absolutely stunning. But what was your favorite part of the Duomo? uh, I personally like the roof, like getting to go and like go and climb around the roof and, um, you know, get to see the sights from there. I think that was really cool. I liked the inside, actually. I like Looking back, knowing how long we had to wait for the roof, I don't think I would do the roof again. That's fair. Yeah. I th- I thought that it was stunning enough inside as well as with the archaeological sites below. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, a gorgeous, gorgeous cathedral. Yes. And the square is very beautiful as well. It is ginormous. Um, there is a shopping center close by, like a covered shopping center, which is really cool to see. Um, plenty of places to go get gelato. And then, of course, you've got to try out risotto, uh, which is a popular dish of the region. So those are all cool things to do in Milan. Honestly, if you have a day, just walking around is always a lot of fun. Um, And seeing those churches and just exploring Milan a little bit. And honestly, you might be a little jet lagged when you get in like we were. Um, So we ended up going back to our hotel and ordering room service and falling asleep because we had an early, early train the next morning. And I highly recommend that if you're going to go with this itinerary to stay at a hotel next to the train station. And so we stayed at the Hyatt centric Milan Centrale, which is very close to the train station. It made it a lot easier to um, five minute walk. Five minute walk from the train station, really convenient uh, versus staying kind of closer to the Duomo. You'd be a bit further out and it would be just you just have to get up earlier to get the train the next day. Um, And then also great food. We had fantastic room service while we were there. Um, And then also they have a rooftop bar. We were too tired, um, but it looked like it would have been a really fun thing to do if we were not quite so tired from all of the stress and anxiety of getting to Milan um, and starting our trip and the jet lag. But that is day one is Milan. Yes. Let's talk about day two. Days two and three. So days two and three, like you said, we got up early on day two in Milan, took a train to Alba. Um, We spent two days in Alba. And during this part of the trip, we stayed at Casa Ignazi. This was such a charming bed and breakfast. The breakfast was fantastic. The The proprietor was wonderful, attentive, mm-hmm. engaging, very nice. I mean, willing to, like, he, I mean, he was asking us, like, what we wanted to do, what kind of food, all of that kind of made stuff. Made reservations. And made reservations for us. Very, very nice place. So I would highly recommend staying there. But the primary reason for us going to Alba was to um, taste wine and go to Barbaresco. And Barolo, two wine regions um, in the area. Yes, and this is in Piedmont. So we flew into Milan, which is in northern Italy, and then took the train over to Piedmont. um, Yes. To Alba. And when we were talking about where to go, these two days were the whole reason that I wanted to go to Italy. Yeah, so missing a day of this, which is what would have happened had we just been like, okay, well, we go a day late. Um, That's what would have happened, and that would have been... A travesty. It would have been. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but so the, the first day that we were there, we toured Barbaresco and the surrounding areas. So we went to two wineries. 
We had coffee. I think we may have had two coffees that day. Um, we got gelato. We had lunch, um, actually, at the the house of the uh, tour guide that yes. was leading us um, on Alba Wine Tours. Yes, we chose Alba Wine Tours, and it's ran by Stef- Stefano and his wife, Manuela. And yeah, we got to have lunch at their house. Delicious which was great. food. Yeah. Um, and then we also visited the village of Barbaresco and the neighboring villages. Um, but like I said, uh, we visited a winery in the morning and then a winery in the afternoon. Um, yeah. As well, before and after lunch, which and was nice. Just as a heads up about wine tasting, at least in this part of Italy. Um, our guide at one point was like, oh, I'm so surprised a lot of Americans will come here and want to go to like four or five places to go do tastings. And obviously here in the U.S., um, if you go to for a wine tasting, especially out in California or just anywhere pretty much in the U.S., you get very small tastings and it's usually four wines. Like a flight. Yeah, but it's very small. You don't. It's not like four glasses of wine. It's tastings of wine. You get four of them. And so, yes, you could do four or five in a day just because a lot of the wineries are pretty close together and you don't really get much to taste, Um, at least in our experience, wine tasting in the U.S. Um, And it depends, obviously. Yeah, sure. It definitely depends. I would. uh, Yeah, I don't know. We haven't been to Napa necessarily. I would hope you get more because those wine tastings are so expensive, but you just never know. Um, So. So in. You know, when we first got our itinerary from the guide about this two day tour, we were only going to two wineries a day. And I remember Chris and I were a little disappointed. We were like, oh, like, you know, should we, you know, I want to see all the cute little surrounding towns and countryside and like castles and stuff. But like, you know, we're here to kind of taste wine and and to enjoy that experience and potentially buy wine. And then we get there and but we're like okay well they know what they're doing their local guides whatever we get there and are at the first winery i don't i couldn't even tell you how many wines we tried but it's not for tastings like i get now why <laughs> why you only go to two a day yeah uh because there's like 12 to 14 tastings and it's like pretty healthy pours where they put the the spit bucket in the middle spitting is very much like totally acceptable even just after you do a little taste of a glass dumping it is totally acceptable so that you can make room for more wine. Um, because if you drank it all, you would be under the table very, very quickly. <laughs> it's like if you did this. So once we went to the first winery, we were like, oh, that's why you only do two a day. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad that's how we did it because all of the wineries were like that, where you tried multiple wines and you could definitely get buzzed very quickly. Not that that's the point, but like you certainly don't want to... Um, probably do more than two wineries a day in yeah. this part of the country um, simply because you try so many different types of wine and they give you a lot of tasting and it's just yeah it's okay to also just pour it out if if you've had a bit too much or if you want to slow down and, and try try more <laughs> yeah I mean I think that in two days including wines that we like ordered at dinner and mm-hmm. stuff I think we tried like 49 different wines yeah. Something wild. Yes. Um, which was, so was kind of cool. But um, <laughs> yes, after after the second winery in the afternoon, then we went back to Alba, had a delicious dinner that we'll probably go into a little bit more detail mm-hmm. um, in, in a future episode. But the next day was all about Barolo. Um, again, we did two wineries, the, the first in the morning, the second in the afternoon. And we visited um, Barolo in the morning. And we visit. Well, I'm getting there. Sorry. Goodness. Um, we also visited the village of Barolo. The day was um, split up by lunch again, which was at a wonderful little agroturismo um, hotel, winery. Um, just, I mean, a, a, a beautiful place with, with beautifully fresh, fresh food. Um, oh, yeah. We had a tasting menu and it was it was so good. I can't wait to talk about that. <laughs> yes, it was very good. But again, then we went back to um, Alba in the evening. We went out for an aperitivo. Yes. And we Our had, first of many on the trip. Yes. And we had a delicious dinner that evening as well. But again, it was an earlier night here because we, again, had an early train <laughs> the next morning. Yeah. And... With our, when we went to our first aperitivo, at first we were like, oh, we'll just grab a drink. No big deal. It's pretty casual. Um, And we saw everybody kind of had the same sort of appetizers on their, 
I don't know, on their tables. And we just thought, oh, this must just be like, maybe they're ordering it. You know, maybe we should order it. This was your favorite part about aperitivos. Right? Um, but anyway, so we get our drink and then all of a sudden they place this on like on the table with us and we don't get charged extra. And it's a huge plate of charcuterie and cheeses and there's breadsticks and the, um, which by the way, breadsticks in Italy are very different. They're like hard sticks. Um, they're still good though. Um, little sandwiches. I mean, it was a lot of food and very delicious with our aperitivo. Uh, I was very happy about the free snacks. (laughs) so yes. So that's what happened for those two days. We went to Alba in the in Piedmont and got to explore Brolarolo and Barbaresco. Now, before I get into days four and five of our trip and sharing lots of more great information with you guys, um, if you guys have lots of fantastic information to share, why not start a podcast? Do you have an idea for a great new podcast? You can bring your idea to life and start your podcast today with Libsyn. Our podcast has been on Libsyn for three three years. Um, And ever since the very beginning, we have been hosting with Libsyn and we love it. Libsyn has everything you need to plan, launch, and grow your own podcast. Libsyn provides some of the best resources created by expert podcasters who will show you everything you need to know, like what equipment you should use, how to record great audio, how to get your show onto Apple Podcasts and other popular platforms, and so much more. Plus, as a friend of Worldwide Honeymoon, when you sign up with Libsyn, you get your first month of podcast hosting for free. There has never been a better time than right now for you to start podcasting. Visit Libsyn.com and use code FRIEND, F-R-I-E-N-D. That's Libsyn, L-I-B. SYN.com and use code FRIEND, F R I E N D, to get started and create your podcast today. Thank you, Libsyn. All right, now we are on days four and five. And just like Christopher said before, uh, we have an early night on day three because we're catching the train to Bologna on day four. And why did we choose Bologna? Uh, well, because. We were doing a lot of research um, about great places for food. And obviously, Italy is a foodie country. The food is fantastic everywhere. Uh, But the Amalia Romagna region or Amalia Romagna region of Italy is known as the foodie capital of Italy. And Bologna is kind of the capital of all of that. So that's why we decided, okay, Bologna is the place to go because this part of the trip we just want to eat. <laughs> and that's exactly what we did. Uh, we took the train in to Bologna and stayed at Casa Bertigni, which was such an adorable place. It is ran by um, this man who's, it's basically the hotel um, has been in his family for years as their family home. It was his grandparents' home. Um, He even showed us all of the antiques that are around the place are actually from his grandparents. They aren't just things that were thrifted. Um, So it was a really cool, uh, quirky, fun uh, place. And they also had a little garden to go and sit out at, which we made our own little aperitivo. And uh, yeah, so our first day in Bologna, we just kind of wandered around. We saw the two towers. We saw the Neptune statue, some iconic sites um, that are in Bologna. And then we um, overestimated... (laughs) I was going to say, this is not a kind of wandered around day. We we wandered around and then we were like, oh, I heard there's this church at the top of the hill that you can hike to. And it's under all these porticos. Because in Bologna, it's very famous for having these beautiful porticos uh, that you can walk under. They're everywhere. It's great because you don't have to worry about getting rained on. It's also great for sunny, hot days. You can kind of stay out of the sun a little bit. Um, But I heard that you could walk under these porticos all the way up to this beautiful church. Um... (laughs) Uh, called San Luca, so Basilica de San Luca. And so we decided, you know what, we're going to hike up it. How long could it possibly take? It's not that bad. Turns out it's very steep and very long up these porticos, and it took us a long time to find (laughs) to get all the way up it. But it was such a fun time to do, um, and it was worth it because the views from the top of the city were really cool. Um, so we get to the top of Basilica de St. Luca. We went inside. We got to see the, um, you know, the interior, which was really pretty. But we also booked a ticket for the San Luca Sky Experience where we could climb up uh, to the top of the church and see the beautiful views of the countryside and even downtown Bologna. We could see the towers and all of that stuff. So that was a really fun experience. Um, 
And while we were there, we certainly ate at some delicious restaurants as well um, and tried lots of local delicacies like bolognese, pasta. Hold on. Before we get too deep into the food, let's go back to this church incident. (laughs) Okay. I would not do it. I thought it was a lot of fun, especially walking under the porticos. You can also take. You can walk around the porticos on the flat land in and around Bologna. This is not for. To me, it was not worth it. Okay, you can also take like a tourist bus up there, if you really want to as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that the that the inside and the views were worth the effort. The juice wasn't worth the squeeze, in my opinion. Okay. Like not at all. Okay, I thought it was. I really enjoyed it. Okay. But I'm sorry, I interrupted you when you were talking about bolognese. Um, Yeah, so we were trying local delicacies in Bologna at the restaurants, which we will get into more detail about. But we certainly tried our fair share of tortellini and broth. Do not sleep on that. It looks like it's simple, but it's so, so freaking delicious. Um, We tried bolognese. Um, while we were there, which is obviously Bologna, Bolognese, it's a meat ragu sauce. Um, we also had lasagna while we were there, also very delicious. Uh, mortadella, which is kind of their locally made um, sausage sort of thing um, for aperitivo. And Lombrusco, which is a fun little wine that is a sparkling red wine from the area. I love Lombrusco. It was so fun. I love Lombrusco. We drank that every night we were in uh in bologna Bologna, yeah um but yeah so that's day four was exploring bologna it's a very cute town it's a college town too there's lots of students there um i even asked like a local about that too um like hey i thought you know it's summertime aren't the students out for summer and they were like no a lot of the time they usually just get the month of august off so there will be students in and out and about throughout the year um then the next day we went to modena And I've always wanted to go here because I love balsamic vinegar and I've always wanted to go where you can try the traditional balsamic vinegar of Modena. Now they make balsamic vinegar of Modena, which you can get in the grocery store. um, And that varies in like thickness and consistency and sometimes even quality. Uh, But you can still get really good quality, just regular vinegar. But the traditional stuff is really good. It's very, it's kind of sweet and syrupy and very, very delicious. And it can only be made in these round bottles uh, that are very specific. And it was really neat because while we were exploring Modena, we did the Taste Bologna food tour um, of Modena. And we got to try, we went to a local tasting room and tried authentic, traditional balsamic vinegar of Modena and bought a bottle to take home. And it was absolutely delicious to try the different balsamics and learn about the process of how they're made. Yeah. And it's night and day between. Yes. Between the traditional stuff and the stuff that we can generally get. Yeah. And the stuff that you can generally get isn't bad. It's It's great for salad dressings. Like I wouldn't use the traditional stuff as like a salad dressing or something like that. It's more of like a putting a put on some Parmesan, like a few drops of it during aperitivo or more of a special occasion thing. Um, Also on the food tour, we got to try a local specialty called gnocco frito, which is a little kind of a fried bread. And sometimes it's stuffed. Uh, Ours that we got was just regular. It was nice. It was very good. It was delicious to uh, dip in our cappuccinos that we got. Uh, We tried some local cakes. We went to a market in Modena and tried different types of Parmesan, which is also from this region. Uh, We tried the 12 month, which is almost more of like a cheese board. It's not that crumbly. It's Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano. Yeah. Um, We tried the 12 month, which is more... um, it's a very different texture. It's not the kind that you can easily shred and put on pastas and things like that. Um, it's very soft in a way. Um, or semi-soft cheese, if you will. And then we tried the 24-month and the 36-month. And those are more of the um, Parmigiano Reggianos you're more used to, with the 36-month being very peppery, too. So it was very interesting to try and, and get the different, different tastes of them. Yeah. Yeah. So... Really enjoyed all of that. Then we came back to Bologna because we just did a day trip of Modena and just had a lovely, lovely um, aperitivo in front of a church, 
which was so cute in this adorable town square. And the drink deals are fantastic in Bologna, especially if you're near the university because you have tons of students. I saw pictures of April spritzes going for like 10 euro near the university. Now, the quality... I was shocked that you hosed two of them. Oh, st- oh my gosh. Um, but it was really cool to, to see that. Um, and yeah, it was a really great time. And we went to a fabulous dinner. And then we went to bed because the next day we were heading to our last stop of our seven-day trip of Italy. Yes. So we spent day six and seven in Rome. We stayed at the Hotel Residenza San Callisto. In Trastevere. Yes. And I really enjoyed this portion of the trip as well. Yeah. Um, the first day we just kind of walked around. We saw the Trevi Fountain which sounds about as chaotic as your beach vacation. Um, <laughs> and uh, But we also went to the City of Water, mm-hmm. which was a museum that shows like underneath of the Trevi Fountain. Yes, you get to see the, um, the water that flows underneath of the Trevi Fountain. It's really cool. It's got some aqueducts and things like that underneath of it which is neat to see yeah it was it was just kind of like a different perspective which i always enjoy those um and then we did a tour of the Colosseum and the roman forum with a company called the tour guy yes and i highly recommend this tour um this one gave us access to the gladiators entrance which was really fun um you got to go on kind of the ground floor also, going on tours of these places is so helpful because you get a lot more context uh, versus trying to go see it on your own or even on an audio guide. Um, it's just really nice to kind of have like a local guide there that, that really knows this information to, to answer your questions and to give you this perspective. It was. And I loved the Colosseum. Really yes. did. And I also really enjoyed the Roman Forum. But again, I think like you said, if we were just walking around by ourselves, I wouldn't have gotten nearly as much out of it. We also found the best place to take a photo of the Colosseum, and that's in the in Roman, the Roman Forum. Forum. Yeah, yeah, I did not know that because I'm always wondering how do people get these fantastic shots of the entire Colosseum that's not just completely surrounded by other tourists. And you certainly will get them in your photo because they're all over the Colosseum. But such a great photo that we got. Um, yeah, yeah, and the guide also. I thought it was really interesting because we were walking on the actual ancient Roman streets in the Forum. But our guide was like, yeah, did you know that when you're walking around Rome, you're not walking on ancient Roman streets at all. Uh, Rome, as it is today, is built on top of ancient Rome, which is why there is currently a subway, which the public transportation in Rome is not great, um, especially their metro system, because every time they try to dig for their third metro line that they've been working on for 12 years that still isn't finished, um, They go to dig, find more ruins, and have to stop, get people in to excavate, find out if this was an important historical thing. Obviously, this process takes a long time before they start digging again and figuring out what to do. Um, So, yeah, I mean, basically, if you dig in Rome, you're going to find more ancient stuff because it basically was built on top of it. (laughs) Which is pretty sweet. (laughs) Which is pretty cool. Um. And then we had a a delicious aperitivo, delicious dinner um, that evening as well. Um, And then our last full day, we did a tour of the Vatican Museums. And this was an early morning. It was. It was with a company called Walks of Italy. And the name of the tour, was it the Pristine Sistine? Yes. 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 And so it was the Vatican Museums. And then we also were able to spend about 20 minutes inside of the Sistine Chapel. Um, I did not really know what to expect out of this portion of our trip. Um, the Sistine Chapel may have been like the best 20 minutes of the entire trip for me. Mm -hmm. That was just absolutely incredible. It was so, um, I mean, you, you were surrounded by all sides, by, by things that you couldn't possibly take it all in. Right. I mean, obviously you have, um, you, you have the famous works on the painting and then um, the, the very large work on the on one of the walls. But, I mean, on all of the walls, there, there were different, um, different paintings and works of art that were just incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, that was a lot of fun. And I also really enjoyed the Vatican Museum. 
um, we we only spent I think about three hours, four hours maybe. I think four hours. Four hours. It started at about seven thirty in the morning, or we met at like seven in the morning or so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then because we got to the thing at eight to get, you know, you go in as soon as it opens and all of that sort of thing. Um, and I think we finished at like eleven thirty maybe. Yeah, close to lunchtime. But yeah, re- I mean, it was just spectacular. It really was. Um, I think it was a perfect amount of time because, like I said, there's just so much to look at. It's very easy to get, like, visually overwhelmed. Um, Yeah, and luckily our guide is an art history buff, so she explained so much great art, pointed out a lot of great art that we probably wouldn't have thought about much um, until she had explained it, and it was really cool. Very, very neat. Um, And then after the Vatican tour, we... Um, we got lunch, we got some Roman pizza, and then we just kind of walked around Rome. Um, we went to the Pantheon, which was just another architectural marvel. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also visited San Luigi de Franceschi, or Francesi, Franceschi? Franceschi, I think. And, um, the St. Agnes Cathedral. Yes. Um, Beautiful, beautiful places uh, to go and see. And the St. Agnes Cathedral is also in a lovely square, gorgeous fountains. Um, Yes. Yeah. I think that's Piazza Navone. Okay. I believe that was called. I think that's right. Yeah. uh, But yeah, basically we went into some churches. And so the big thing about, so like the Pantheon is currently also a church, uh, which I didn't, I did not know, but it's basically one of the most preserved, our best preserved Roman ruins um, or Roman architectural buildings um because it was later converted into a church so definitely um some really cool churches in rome to go and check out just the architecture and everything that's in them they're just visually stunning but yeah after after that what did we do went back to trust Avery. yep another apertivo another killer dinner the best dinner of our trip yes yes and um then then unfortunately we had to call it a trip we did then, uh, yeah, we had to leave. And the next morning, we um, were able to go get a coffee and a last little pastry. And then we had to say bye to Rome and we flew home. Yes. And that was the end of our trip. Yeah. So, so to recap, day one was in Milan. Days two and three were in Alba. Days four and five were in Bologna slash Modena. And days six and seven were in Rome. Um, what was the best moment of the trip for you? I would say the first day in Alba was very special. Um, Just, yeah, because that, I think it was really cool to, to learn about the hazelnuts that are in Alba, the truffles. Like, I I just think it was really, really cool to, I don't know, that whole experience. I honestly, I, it's hard to pinpoint a moment, but I actually thought it was really neat when we were at our first winery and you had this father and son who owned the winery and our guide just conversing slash kind of debating in Italian just back and forth and back and forth and it didn't stop like it was just no pauses um and here we are eating um some cheese and and some salami and just drinking some wine and being like wow we're definitely in Italy in this like very cozy little wine tasting room um drinking Italian wine hearing this Italian conversation we didn't understand any of it I mean the our guide would sometimes like translate back and forth but it was just, it kind of felt like we were part of it and it was really fun. Um, I don't know. I think that was such a fun little moment that happened that I, that I kind of chuckled at myself and I was like, well, we're definitely in Italy. <laughs> what about you? Mine was the Sistine Chapel. Um, if I'm going to distill it down to like a moment sort of thing, mm-hmm. um, I think walking in, looking up and seeing the the paintings of Michelangelo or Michelangelo's paintings, not paintings of him, um, on the ceiling. Yeah. And just kind of, like I said, just, just being surrounded on all sides by, by things that just took my breath away. Um, it was absolutely incredible. It really was. And like the story behind everything and all of the symbolism and, and, um, just very, very neat. Again, I think, we've said it a few times, but definitely, um, recommended to go with a guide. Yeah. What was your best meal? My best meal was the cacio e pepe at Roma Spirito, which was our very last night. 
in Rome. Yeah. Yes. In Trastevere, their carbonara was also great. Um, in the interest of not repeating what you just said, uh, my second favorite was definitely the tortellini and broth at Vicolo Colombina in Bologna. Okay. Did that did that last... beat out Cacio e Pepe at Roma Sprita? No. Okay. Okay. But it was like it was your second, just below. Okay. Very very delicious. What was your best drink from the trip? My best drink is the Barolo in Stropiana at Stropiana Winery, where we went to on day two of our wine tour. It was actually our, was that our last winery? It was. It was our last winery. So good. Very smooth. Which one? Which Barolo? I don't remember. One of them. They were all so good. Um, and then my second place would be the Aperol Spritz at Ercoli. That was easily in Rome in the Trastevere area our last night. I think that was the best april of the trip but what okay. were you, what was your best drink my best drink was the 2013 strapiana barolo busha reserva okay yeah that one i'm guessing that that was the one that you were thinking yes of. i just didn't have the exact one written down <laughs> um would you do this trip all over again i would okay i would i would go back um if i had more time i would add one more day in rome um, so yes. that we could go back to like St. Peter's Basilica and just kind of like slow down a little bit in Rome. Yeah. Um, I always recommend three full days in a city in Europe. Um, just because the first two days you sort of hop around and do a lot of the touristy things. And the third day you kind of, ha- you can slow down a little bit because you've seen a lot of the touristy sites at this point And now you can just kind of like get into the vibes of the city. Yeah. Um, or see, you know, a little bit more, but yeah. What if you had to cut a portion of the trip? I mean, just Milan, because I've been there so many times, but like you kind of. So you would have wanted to land and then taken a longer train ride? Uh, I guess. I don't know. Like it was such a short trip that it's hard to cut anything out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I would cut Bologna. Ah, it's a bummer. I liked Bologna a lot. I did too, but I think that I would cut it and add a full extra day in Rome. Yeah. Um, If I had more time, I would add a day extra in Rome and a day extra in Alba for sure. Um, and honestly, I mean, again, perfect world here. We had 10 days. I would probably add an extra day to Rome, extra day to Alba, and either do some truffle hunting or just go to more wineries. Um, and then do an extra day in maybe Modena, like actually stay in Modena. That would have been nice. Because that was such a charming town that I really enjoyed it. And I think it would have been fun to explore that more. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else? I think that's it. I really, really enjoyed this trip. Uh, we had such a great time. It was a quick trip, but it was a lot of fun. We saw a lot. It didn't feel too terribly rushed considering the pace. Um, We actually had a lot of fun, a lot of great aperitivos, great dinners, great food, great wine, and great tourist sites that we got to go see too. But let us know your thoughts. Uh, Would you guys take this trip to Italy? What other fun off the beaten path places do you love in Italy? You can always let us know um, by tweeting us on WWHoneymoon on Twitter emailing us at cat at worldwidehoneymoon.com or reaching us on Instagram at Worldwide Honeymoon. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to worldwidehoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links. And these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.